Hello everyone, uh, good afternoon. Uh, in this talk, I'll be talking about image patching and an open source project called COPA, which can be used for patching container image vulnerabilities. Now, before starting, I want to ask that, is there anyone who has heard about image patching before? No one, so, okay, one. So, uh, okay, so we'll learn something new on this talk today. Uh, so, to get started, I am Anubhav Gupta. I work as a software engineer at Acuity, and uh, I've just graduated uh, two months back, and uh, previously I've interned with the CNCF, where a part of my task was working on the COPA tool, so which is the same tool I'm going to talk about today. And uh, as you can see, I am relatively new to speaking, so if there's something you do not like, please pardon me and please share your feedback at the end. And uh, I'll be uh, open to questions at the end, but feel free if you want to stop me in the middle and ask anything. So this is our agenda for today. Uh, this will be a 15-minute talk. Um, we'll start with image vulnerability, and then we'll see what is image patching. Uh, then I'll introduce the project Copacetic to you, what it is, what it does, its architecture, and we'll see a trade-offs analysis. After which I'll do a live demo where I will uh, demonstrate the tool to you. And in the end, to wrap up, I will share something known as plugin support. So let's start with image vulnerability. We have been hearing about image vulnerabilities since the morning, and I'm pretty sure that um, almost everyone knows what image vulnerability is. But uh, I'll do a quick overview, as in order to understand image patching, we need to understand what is image vulnerability first. Uh, so what does it mean when we say an image is vulnerable? It means that there is a certain package in our image which is vulnerable. And by vulnerable, we mean that there is a certain exploit available uh, by which malicious attackers can target our system. Uh, so this package doesn't necessarily have to be in the topmost application layer. It could be in the base image or in the second layer, for example. It is also possible that this package might be in some third party image which you are not directly using. So uh, now there are a number of uh, sc vulnerability scanners which are available. Uh, some examples of the uh, most popular, uh, which are free and open source, are Trivi, Gripe, and Docker Scout. So how many of you have uh, heard about either of these scanners? OK, so quite a few of you. So what these scanners do is, obviously, they scan for vulnerabilities. But how do they do so? They do so by, uh, uh, they do so by searching for the packages in your images. And then they correlate it with the vulnerability database. And then they list all the exploits which are available, along with something known as a C CVE, which is Common Vulnerability and Exposure. Now, these scanners also show the severity of the vulnerability, which can be high, low, or medium. Uh, in addition to this, an important uh, data which these scanners list is the installed version and the fixed inversion. So this data is also used during the image patching process. So installed version is the version which, uh, which is the uh, version which is installed in your image, and uh, it is the vulnerable version. And fixed version is the package version. If you update your package to this particular version, then your vulnerabilities will be fixed. And in case there is no fixed version available, then that means that there is no known fix for this yet. So moving on to image patching. What does it mean? Uh, in very simple terms, it means that uh, there is a vulnerable package in your image, which is uh, thereby making your overall image to be vulnerable. And by patching, we patch that particular package to, so that it makes your overall image to be secure. Now, uh, image patching and image rebasing are two different things. In image rebasing, uh, we change the base image to a more recent version. Uh, so, uh, while the top layers are not changed, it is just the uh, base image that is changed. But in image rebasing, as you might know, it requires a full rebuild of the image, 
which, as you might know, takes a lot of time. Uh, in in, in uh, image patching, uh, in image patching, we have it is small, uh, like it is quick, and it is smaller. Uh, in image patching, we do targeted updates, so we only update those packages which we uh, want, rather than uh, rather than image rebase, rather than image rebases in in which we update the whole base image. So, for example, there might be a third-party vulnerability which is embedded deep inside a layer of your image. So you can fix that particular vulnerability by just patching your image. And uh, last but not the least, it is also helpful in meeting compliance. So different organizations have different compliance needs, so they can, this can be useful for them. Moving on to Project Copacetic. Uh, Copa is an open source CNCF sandbox project. It was originally created by Microsoft and was later donated to the CNCF. And it is a relatively newer project and it's been only about one year since it got donated to the CNCF. It is a CLI tool which is used for patching your container image vulnerabilities. Now, now it focuses just on the patching part and doesn't have any other feature like image scanning because there are a lot of tools which are already available. So it just focuses on one specific task which is image patching. And in order to run COPA, there is a simple CLI command, COPA patch, and we specify the image which needs to be patched. Now, as you saw in the previous slides, uh, with COPA, it is a quick fix, and uh, you don't need to rebuild the image, which means that you can uh, the, the exported image is quick enough, and the patch process is also less complex. So, as you know that in uh, image rebuild, we need to run the complete uh, rebuild pipeline, but with COPA, you just need to run a simple CLI command. Uh, less technical knowledge is needed as to how to update the packages, because in uh, rebuilding, we need to know which dependencies are there and which need to be updated, but you do not know, you, you don't need to know this in COPA. And also, uh, anyone can patch this. So it's not just the image publishers, but DevOps engineers can also patch the images. Uh, it also saves costs and uh, because we do not have to wait for upstream rebuilds and uh, we, we do not have to recreate, rebuild the entire image. So, uh, there, uh, so the layer cache is not there, so the storage space is less and the cost is less. And last but not the least, it integrates with a lot of security scanners which makes your uh, patching process streamlined. Uh, so this is the architecture of COPA. On the bottom left, you can see uh, there is the application image. It consists of four layers, OS, language, framework, and application. Now we scan this image using any scanner you want. Let's say we scan this using Trivi. Now this, uh, now Trivi produces a vulnerability report, and this vulnerability report is needed by COPA to patch the uh, images. So COPA uh, uh, takes this report as input, it reads it, it parses it, and determines what are the packages that needs to be updated. It then applies a single patch layer on top of my container image. So as you can see that before there were four layers, and now there is just one more layer on top of my application, which is the patch layer, which consists of the updated packages. It then, exposed, it then exports this patched image locally to my system. Now, before uh, starting with the demo, there's one thing I'd like to share that uh, only OS level vulnerabilities can be patched with COPA. So there's two kinds of vulnerabilities, OS level vulnerability and application level vulnerability. OS level vulnerabilities are the vulnerabilities because of the underlying components in my OS, in my operating system. On the other hand, application level vulnerability is vulnerability based on the application code. So for example, a SQL injection or an outdated Python package. Now COPA cannot patch this because it doesn't have access to your source code. So it doesn't read your source code, so it cannot patch it. And this is not really a drawback, but more of a design decision of COPA that they only support OS level vulnerabilities. So now I'll be uh, uh, starting with the demo.
so for demo, I'll be using the Nginx image and I'll be using the Trevi uh, scanner. So how many of you are familiar with Trevi? Okay, a lot of you. So for those of you who don't know, Trevi is just like uh, uh, the scanner which scans your image. So in order to scan it, we use the command Trevi image and specify the image which needs to be scanned. So uh, for this demo, I will use the Nginx 1.23 image. So, so this is the uh, vulnerabilities in this image. As you can see that it says that there are a total of 299 vulnerabilities. This is the package name. This is the CVE ID. Uh, this is the severity. And this is the installed version. So installed version is the uh, version which is installed in my image. And you can see that some uh, packages also have a fixed version, which means that if you update this package to this particular version, this vulnerability can be fixed. So this is something which Copa uses in order to determine which package to fix and which packet to not fix. So now I will be exporting this uh, vulnerability report in a JSON file as Copa needs to read it. So this saved the vulnerability data in a JSON file. And now I will use, I will run the COPA command. So COPA can be run simply using a command like COPA patch. And we specify the image which needs to be patched. In our case, it is the Nginx image. And then we specify the report, the path to the report, which uh, Trevi generated. So it is this path. And then we have something known as uh, the address, which is the build kit address. So uh, in the background, I have build kit running. So how many of you are familiar with build kit? No one? Uh, some, um, some of you, okay. So build kit is uh, actually a product of Docker. So if you know about Docker buildx, which is used for building images, so buildx uses a build kit for building container images. It is a new technology and Docker is slowly replacing it as the default builder. So if you use Docker buildx, then build kit is being used under the hood for building your images. So this is just used for actually building your images. Now I will run the command. So as you can see, these are the packages which are being updated to their uh, fixed versions. And here we can see that Copa uh, is applying a new patch layer. It is installing those packages. And uh, I can, if I do, if I go to Docker Hub, uh, if I go to my Docker dash dashboard, Nginx. Okay, so uh, we can see this is the new image, uh, Nginx, with, and the tag is the 1.23 patched one, which means that this is the patched image. And let me run Docker history. So we can see that uh, this was the old layer. And we have a new layer on top, which is where the uh, COPA has installed all the, uh, all the new packages. So there's just one la more layer above my uh, Docker image. Now I, I will test both, both of my images. So previously I had tested the Trivi image, uh, sorry, the Nginx image, Nginx 1.23. And we saw that there were 299 vulnerabilities before. 
and now I will scan my new image. And we can see there are just 181 vulnerabilities. And uh, all these vulnerabilities which are not fixed do not have a fixed version available. So there's no fix available for this yet. And like security researchers are actively uh, finding a fix for them. So uh, this was about uh, Project COPA. And before wrapping up, I'd like to talk about two things. One is plugin support. So by default, COPA uses Trivi for, uh, for the vulnerability reports. But uh, we understand that different organizations have different needs. So for example, you might not want to use Trivi. You might be partnering with some other security organization, and you might want to use their tool. For example, Gripe. So if I want to use Gripe, then there's something known as plugins available. You can download a specific plugin for whatever scanner you want, and then uh, you, there is a flag called scanner. You just specify the plugin, and then Copa will be able to understand that report. So as of now, there is only a plugin for Gripe available, but there is a detailed section available on Copa website as to how you can create a plugin. So if you want to create a plugin, you can uh, read that. And uh, this plugin is language neutral, so it can be created in any language you want. Uh, and one more thing I would like to talk about is uh, GitHub Actions. So Copa also has GitHub Actions, which can be used for automating the workflow. So you can automate the patching process. And there is also a Docker extension available, which you can use. If you are a UI kind of person, you can use it for patching via the UI. So that's it about uh, container image patching. And I would re encourage you to go ahead and contribute to the repo. And like, if there's any issue, if there's any feature that you'd want Copa uh, uh, to have, then please engage with the maintainers. Join the CNCF Slack channel. And there's the Copa channel. You can engage with the maintainers. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Questions, if any? Yes. So thank you. Uh, you uh, you mentioned uh, Gripe plugin. So if if we want to use Gripe and Copa, Copa. Copa uh, so then uh, so Copa uh, use. Uh, J JSON, JSON file yes. uh, output Gripe, right? So, yes, it will use the JSON file generated yeah. by Gripe. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Ah, OK. Uh, like Tori B. Ah, uh, yeah, like, like uh, Tori B, Tori B also uh, output JSON file. Uh, Copa uh, use uh, JSON file. Yes, so, yeah, okay. uh, so the vulnerability report, if you're using Gripe plugin, then you pass in the report which is generated by Gripe. So Gripe report in JSON format, and Copa will be able to patch it. Ah, OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Interesting tool. Um, which package managers do you support? You so, short apt and? So uh, Copa. Uh, finds the package manager based on the OS. So it relies on the vulnerability scanners to determine which OS is being used and which package manager to use to install the updates. So there's like a two-step process. Firstly, it depends on the vulnerability scanner data if uh, to find the uh, package manager to use. And if it is not able to find, then it uh, finds it in the etc slash host OS path. OK, do the vulnerability scanners directly output the command line for that? Because I always only see the fixed version, and then you need to specify the command for that. And yeah, they do not specify the command, but they do specify which OS is being used. OK, so would that work on Arch, for example? Sorry? Would that work on Arch? Yes, it would work on Arch. OK, yeah, thanks. It, it works on distro-less containers as well. 
the, the only thing it doesn't work on is uh, chain guards while fee based images. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. No more questions? Okay. Thank you, everyone.